Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at dynamic addressing for IPv6 global unique addresses. We'll be discussing RS and RA messages. We'll look at Slack. We'll look at Slack with stateless DHCP version 6. And then we'll look at stateful DHCP version 6. We'll also talk about the EIU64 process and randomly generated interface IDs. This episode is part of my series on introduction to networks for the CCNA. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. Section five, dynamic addressing for IP version six, global unicast addresses. Devices can obtain global unicast addresses dynamically using ICMP version six messages. There's several of these messages. First one here is a router solicitation message. They're sent by host devices. They're sent by the end devices to figure out where are the routers on our network? Where is my default gateway? So a host will send that out to in hopes of finding a router on their network. Router advertisements, they're in turn sent by the routers themselves, by the default gateways. That lets them know how, how, how are they gonna get an IP version six address on your network. And they can provide different types of information that includes the network prefix and the prefix length. So that network portion of the address. What is the default gateway on this network? Typically it is the link local address of that interface on the router on that network. And then we also hand out other pieces of information like a DNS address and a DNS name or your domain name. Router advertisements, they provide three different methods for IP version six global unicast addresses. The first one is what we have is stateless, stateless address auto configuration or commonly known as Slack. Second method is Slack with a stateless DHCP version server and then the third method is a stateful DHCP version six server. The first method here is Slack, the stateless address auto configuration. What happens here is it is not using a DHCP server, but they're still gonna get an address dynamically. The device information from the IP version six router advertisement, once again, that's what the router is sent out to the device saying here, this is the network, the network prefix, our DNS, our, our domain name, information like that. That provides us our prefix. Once again, that's our slash number. The last part of the address is the interface ID. And that is either using a EU-65 or randomly generated portion. And so the Slack method, we, we use this router advertisement message to get our prefix here the first 64 the first half of our address then that last part the client goes ahead and creates this the device id method two uses slack and a stateless dhcp server so it used some of the process from method one but then it also uses a stateless dhcp we use our router advertisement again. And that router advertisement says, hey, use Slack and use a stateless DHCP. The router advertisement message will give suggestions to the device. And it'll say, use Slack to create your own IP version six address. The router link local address will be the default gateway. And then the stateless DHCP server to obtain other information. And so down here, we start with a router solicitation message. The device sends that out, goes across the network, goes to the router. The router then sees that request, sends a router advertisement back. That router advertisement says, hey, use Slack to figure out what your, your own IP version six address is. Then use my link local address as your default gateway. Our default gateway is this link local address right there typically it's like an fe80 colon colon one and then for the rest of your information contact this dhcp server over here 
This DHCP server is stateless. It doesn't hand out addresses. It just gives you some additional information, domain names, DNS, other pieces of information for your network. Method three is a stateful DHCP server. This is very similar to DHCP for version four. And you can receive all of your information through this DHCP version six server. The router advertisement here suggests that the router LLA link local address is used as the default gateway and that you should contact the state full DNS server. And so when the computer turns on, it sends out a router solicitation message, which is right here, goes to our server. Server sends back an R RA router advertisement and basically it says, use my link local address as your default gateway, and then contact this server over here. And this is a stateful server. And that server is gonna give you all your need. It's gonna give you your global unicast address. It's gonna give you your prefix length. It's gonna give you addresses of your DNS server. And if there's any other additional information, the, the stateful DHCP server will hand that information out to you. I hope you're liking this episode on dynamic addressing for IBV6 global unique addresses. If you have the time, please leave me a comment and let me know what you think about dynamic addressing for IPv6. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. As we talked about it, Slack in Slack with a DHCP version six stateless server, the client must generate its own ID. Once again, the, the prefix or the network portion is typically 64 bits of your 128 bits of your IP version six address. So the client needs to generate its last 64 bits. It needs to generate its own interface ID. And there's typically two processes. And so what we see here, we have a little diagram here. The router, router advertisement says, hey, use Slack, generate your own ID. We're going to give you your prefix that comes from your RA message here, your router advertisement. But you're going to generate your own client ID. Now, the EUI64 process. The EUI64 process, and there's also a, a modified version of that. What it does is it takes the MAC address of the device, and so that's of your client PC, of your smartphone, of your tablet. It takes the MAC address of that and inserts in the middle of it a hexadecimal value of FFFE. So right smack in the middle between... The, the first three hex texts and the last three hex texts, it sticks in FFFE in the middle, and then it changes the seventh bit, bit of that client MAC address is reversed from a zero to a one. Two things happen. Down here, we have a MAC address, 48 bit MAC address. This is the same MAC address we've always used. This is the MAC address that's burnt into the network interface you have. We have our 12 hexadecimal numbers here. What we do is we split it in the middle, split it right here, and we insert FFFE. That's the first step of that. Then the next thing we do is we the seventh bit of that MAC address, we reverse that. What we have here is we have FC. FC, if we take F, that is four ones, one, two, three, four. Then we take C. C is one one zero zero and what we do is we flip the seventh bit one two three four five six this is the seventh bit we flip it we change it from a zero to one that gives us one 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 zero that was the seventh bit we flip so this here is equal to f this when we trans translate this from binary go into decimal in the decimals 14 and have then we take our decimal 14 and change that into hexadecimal that gives us whoops that gives us e so fc changes the fe by flipping that seventh bit 
That is what the EUI64 process. Insert FFEE in the center, flip the seventh bit. The second method to generate your interface IDs is, is a random process. And, and what happens here is we just randomly generate the last 64 bits here. Windows Vista and forward has random has used random generated interface IDs. It doesn't use the EUI 64. It has nothing to do with the MAC address. We, they, Windows just randomly generates it. The client may use a process called DAD, duplicate address de detection. And this is very similar to the ARP. It, it, it goes out, it, it randomly generates this ID. When the ID is generated, it tries to contact that ID on the network. If there is no reply to that contact, then it knows no one's using it. I'm going to go ahead and use it. Down here, we have on our Windows box, we typed in IP config, all one word, no spaces. We have our IP version 6 address information here. When we look at this, this here is our interface ID. This was a number that was randomly generated. If we look at that, just it, it randomly generated it. We notice that that generated part is part of our global, global unicast address. Global unicast address is labeled as IP version 6 address in Windows. It is also part of our link local address. Our link local address for the interface ID part uses that same generated same generated 64 bits. And so we see how that is being used. And of course, here's our default gateway uses the link local address. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on dynamic addressing for IPv6 global unique addresses. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, please click that like button, give a five star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. There you can find out how to get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on introduction to networks for the CCNA. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I picked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode on my series on introduction to networks for the CCNA. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.